The capital hydraulic knee from College Park is a single axis hydraulic knee joint with smooth hydraulic movement and three mode function. This video is designed to review the following steps to help you with successful fittings of the capital knee. We will review recommended bench alignment, static alignment, and what adjustments should be made during the dynamic fitting to optimize function of the knee. The following is the recommended bench alignment as described in our technical documents. First, place the appropriate socket flexion to match the resting hanging angle of the residual femur, making sure to accommodate hip flexor tightness. A vertical line should run from the trochanter through or slightly anterior to the knee axis pivot point and through the posterior third of the prosthetic foot while in the shoe. This is an appropriate starting point for your alignment before the patient dons the prosthesis. The following is the recommended static alignment once the patient dons the prosthesis. This will look different from bench alignment in most cases. The weight line, assumed to be the midpoint of the lateral socket, should now be anterior to the knee axis by 5 to 35 millimeters and anterior to the distal pylon attachment and posterior third of the foot. To access the hydraulic adjustments of the capital knee, you must first remove the adjustment cover. There are three adjustments that control the hydraulic characteristics of the capital in stance and swing. S is for stance resistance. This adjusts the hydraulic resistance to flexion in stance phase of gait. This can be changed to optimize stance flexion, stand to sit resistance, and stair or ramp descent functions. F is for flexion resistance. This adjusts the hydraulic resistance to flexion and swing phase of gait. This is most effective to optimize heel rise and swing. E is for extension resistance. This adjusts the hydraulic resistance to extension and swing phase to optimize terminal swing characteristics. The trigger point resistance adjustment is not a hydraulic adjustment, but rather controls how easily the capital triggers into the low resistance flexion mode at terminal stance. Turning the screw counterclockwise makes the knee easier to trigger, while turning it clockwise requires a more deliberate movement to trigger into swing. The mode selector switch is unique to the capital knee. This switch allows the user to easily toggle between three different mode functions. Normal mode allows the user to ambulate with the hydraulic settings of the knee in full effect. It is important to note that switching to either the locked or free swing modes on the capital require only the movement of the toggle switch. There is no requirement for positioning of the cylinder in either a flexed or extended position or loading of the knee unit to change the function. Toggling to the left causes the capital to enter into a very high hydraulic resistance or locked mode. This high resistance is to flexion only. The capital can enter into locked mode while in flexion, such as in a seated position, and the knee will freely extend until full extension is reached. If at any point the extension movement is stopped, the capital will provide high flexion resistance for support. Toggling the mode selector switch to the right bypasses the hydraulic resistance in the knee and enters into free swing mode with low resistance to flexion and extension. This can be used for cycling and other activities where low resistance is desired. It is important to note that extreme care should be taken when ambulating in free swing mode as the knee will not provide resistance to flexion and this could cause instability in gait due to unexpected flexion of the knee. Before completing the dynamic alignment of the capital, restore all of the adjustments to the factory setting as this will be the best starting point for our dynamic fitting. The F should be at minimal setting, turned all the way counterclockwise. The S should be at maximum resistance, turned fully clockwise. The factory setting for extension resistance E is minimum, or fully counterclockwise. And lastly, the stance trigger resistance T should be at its most sensitive turned fully counterclockwise. Before having the patient ambulate to evaluate dynamic alignment of the prosthesis, ensure that the mode selector switch is in the normal position. This is done by depressing the spring-loaded mechanism in the mode selector switch and placing in the middle of the range of travel. The spring-loaded tab will engage in the detent in the middle position when properly positioned for normal function. 
Once bench alignment and static alignment have been established to be appropriate, have the user walk in the parallel bars with the knee in factory settings to get a first impression and evaluate the stance and swing hydraulic settings. The first setting to adjust in the dynamic fitting is the swing flexion damping or F. If the knee flexion resistance is set too low, the user will exhibit excessive heel rise, which will throw off the timing of terminal swing. The prosthesis may not be fully extended and be ready for loading if there is excessive knee flexion in early swing. If the swing flexion resistance is set too high, the knee may not flex enough during swing phase to facilitate toe clearance at mid stance. This could cause the user to stub their toe or create compensatory movement to clear the prosthesis. Optimizing this adjustment according to the user's needs will allow for a smooth transition through the swing cycle of gait. It is important to use caution when moving away from the minimum resistance to swing extension damping as this adjustment can limit knee range of motion. If the swing extension resistance E is set too low, the user may reach full extension too early or too quickly. This can cause a jarring of the prosthesis due to terminal impact. If the swing extension resistance is set too high, the knee may not reach full extension by terminal swing phase of gait. If this occurs, the knee will be in a flexed position when loaded. This could lead to excessive flexion and the user being unstable in early stance. When both the F and E settings are optimized according to the user's needs, the knee should flex appropriately in early swing and extend fully in late swing so that the prosthesis is positioned for loading at initial contact of the prosthetic limb. Adjusting the stance trigger resistance T. If the stance trigger resistance is set too high, the user may experience a hitch or catch in late stance. This is due to the knee not triggering into swing phase as the hydraulic flexion resistance remains high. If this happens, the stance trigger resistance needs to be lowered by turning the screw counterclockwise with a 2.5 mm hex wrench. If the knee is triggering into swing phase too quickly before the user is ready to load the contralateral limb, the stance trigger resistance may be set too low. To increase the resistance to trigger, turn the screw clockwise. Once the stance trigger resistance is optimized according to the user's needs, the knee should trigger into swing at the appropriate time and transition from stance to swing phase should be seamless. Once the swing settings have been optimized for the user, have them ambulate outside of the parallel bars making sure that the settings are appropriate for varying speeds and step lengths. Ensure that they ambulate at self-selected, fast, and slow pace to double check the appropriateness of the swing settings. Make any fine tuning adjustments as you see fit. To set the optimal stance phase damping for the unilateral user, have them stand in front of a chair and sit down using both the sound side limb and prosthetic side limb. If the stance resistance is set too high, the knee will resist the user too much when they are attempting to sit. If the resistance is set too low, the user may drop into the chair in an unsafe manner. When optimized, the knee should provide the appropriate resistance deflection to allow for a safe and controlled movement from stand to sit. After stand to sit function is evaluated, the user should evaluate resistance during ramp descent and stair descent, ensuring that it is not too fast or slow, but optimized for the user's needs. Now that all of the settings have been optimized for the user, have them ambulate again with varying speeds and step lengths to ensure fine tuning is not necessary. Once all settings are acceptable, it is recommended to place the adjustment cover back on the knee to prevent tampering with any of the adjustment screws. We hope that this video has helped you have a better understanding of how best to adjust the capital hydraulic knee to optimize function for your users. The capital hydraulic knee from College Park. Smooth, stable, dynamic function to meet and exceed the needs of even the most active prosthetic users.